This is a Woodside Church Sunday. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? We feeling chilled? Yeah? Feeling okay? Right, we're starting a new series today, but let me begin by asking you this question. Or maybe posing a scenario. If you, do you regularly, or maybe at all these days, I don't know, ever go into a bookshop? Do you remember the days we used to go to a bookshop and we used to browse the, the books? Do you remember that? Some of you are nodding. Uh, now we probably go, go to Amazon, but there are still bookshops around. Uh, or you can obviously uh, buy books from other providers as well. Uh, but, but just imagine you go to a bookshop and uh, you may want to try this. Go into a bookstore and uh, you may want to check if anyone's looking. Maybe check to the left and to the right and go in and find the dummy series of books. Do you know the dummy series of books? Absolutely remarkable. They've been going for, I don't know, 30, 40 years. I don't know how long. If you've not heard of the dummy series of books, I don't know where you've been. But there are 339 versions of the dummy series. These are books that, that present sometimes complex things in an easy what easy, understandable way for anybody to understand. I, I, about 10 years, they reckon 200 million copies of the dummy books have been purchased. Uh, I don't know what the number is today. There's a variety of titles. You can get sailing for dummies, cocktail parties for dummies. Who has cocktail parties these days? Fishing for dummies, plumbing for dummies, English grammar for dummies. I need to get hold of that one. I know, I know. Uh, I couldn't find a preaching for dummies, though, but there you go. Uh, there's law for dummies, parenting for dummies, bird watching for dummies. I think some of you need one of those. There's even sex for dummies, would you believe? Who knew, eh? One satisfied customer, however, explained his appreciation for this series of books by saying this. I buy them because whatever the subject matter, they spell it out to me in simple terms. They make the complex understandable. They take the intimidation out of the learning process. And he ended with these remarks, even a regular guy like me can get it. Well, I mention this because we're going to be looking at the book from the Bible in the Old Testament called Proverbs. And I think probably Proverbs could fit into the series for dummies. Uh, It is a book that brings ageless, priceless wisdom of God and makes it understandable and accessible to regular people like you and me. The book of Proverbs. No degrees necessary, very few Confusing theological terms, just pertinent truths for everyday everyday life. We can put it on the bottom of the shelf and we can grab it every time we need wisdom in our life. We start a series looking at this remarkable book in our Bibles called Proverbs. Now Proverbs, we must understand, it's not a list of commandments. It's not a list even of eternal truths. It's a compilation of wisdom and words, wise words that describe how life works most of the time. You see, these are not. See, you understand the Bible's made made up of different types of literature, yeah? You understand that? And so we need to read different types of literature in different ways. And so Proverbs isn't a list of commandments, it's at, or a list of eternal truths. It's not like when we read that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. It's not like Jesus said, I will be with you always. It's not that type of writing. Proverbs describes how life works most of the time. Let's give a bit of a flavour as we get into our, our, our sermon and our series Proverbs is colourful at times. Proverbs 26, 21 says this, A quarrelsome person starts fights as easily as a match sets fire to paper. 
That, that's, that's clear, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we get that. We get, what about 1515? When a man is gloomy, everything seems to be going wrong. When he's cheerful, everything seems right. There's some truth in that, isn't there? It's a proverb about basic attitudes and how our attitudes affect our lives. Bless you. Proverbs is also humorous. Proverbs 27, 14 says this, If a man loudly blesses his neighbour in the morning, it will be taken as a curse. (laughs) Morning, neighbour! I need my first cup of coffee before that sort of greeting. Proverbs can be graphic. 12, 20 says this, He who keeps malice harbours a viper in his heart. Wow. Proverbs can be deep. 11, 17 Your own soul is nourished when you are kind. It is destroyed when you are cruel. That's deep. Those who are kind benefit themselves. We know that, don't we? You know that through life. If you are kind to others, it does something good in your soul. But the opposite is also true. Proverbs can be practical. 20. Verse 4 says this, if you won't plough in the cold, you won't eat at the harvest. <laughs> and in fact, that principle comes out in our Bibles many times about sowing and reaping. You reap what you sow in life. If you work hard, you get a reward. It's the way life works most of the time. Now we start a series that we're calling Verses today. It's through the book of Proverbs, and it's a, it's a series comparing different topics that Proverbs speaks of. So today we're talking about wisdom and folly, or the wise and the fool. So let's get into our subject this morning. Wisdom versus folly, the wise versus the fool. Now if we're honest, where do we get most of our wisdom. Maybe you have a whole library of the book of dummies. Do you get wisdom from friends, family, TV, YouTube, the latest influencer? Do you get wisdom from Instagram or Facebook, Google, chat GPT, your latest (laughs) artificial intelligent friend? Do you know what I'm talking about? You've never heard of chat GPT? Wow, there's a whole artificial intelligence world bursting into our worlds. Okay, that's not what I'm speaking of, but it's coming. If you pursue wisdom, Proverbs says, the results are huge. Proverbs says this about wisdom. Proverbs 19, the one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. Proverbs 4 talks about wisdom again. It says this, Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Notice here that wisdom is female according to Proverbs. All of the women are thinking, well, we knew that already. (laughs) And all the guys are thinking, huh? Proverbs 3, 13. This is a challenging one. How blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gains understanding. Its profit is better than gold. Its gain is better than fine gold. She is more precious than jewels. Nothing you desire compares with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honour. Her ways are pleasant ways. And all her paths are peace. Attaining wisdom is better than getting a fortune or winning the lottery. Attaining wisdom is better than having precious jewels. Proverbs says that wisdom tends to produce long life and honour, esteem, wealth and peace. Do you believe it? It's 
powerful. So where do we find this wisdom? If wisdom is so important and has such an impact on our lives, where do we find wisdom? Let me ask this question. Are you someone who is good at taking advice from others? Proverbs 13 says this, where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Do you know, this is a lesson I've had to learn over the years. I don't know why, but sometimes I'm not quick to take advice from others. I sort of want to find my own way a little bit. I think to myself, well, is that pride? Or is that just folly? Or a bit of both? I remember when I was young and I was in uh, a school context or a learning environment, I would not be the first person that would ask the question. Probably not to look foolish, actually, and ask the dumb question. But in there was something of not seeking advice from others. So I've worked on that. I do it a lot now. But what about you? Are you someone who takes advice from others? Are you someone who knows what it means to benefit from from receiving wisdom from others. I'm sure many of us are. Do any of us know any wise mums and dads? Do you know any wise mums and dads who have brought wisdom to their children? Now, of course, it might be, might be actually your dad or your mum, your actual mum and dad, but it can be others that are fathers and mothers to us that bring wisdom to us. So, so I want to keep it broad. But do we know wise mothers and fathers who brought real wisdom to us? And the impact has been amazing on our lives. My mum and dad, I'm so grateful to say, over the years for my brother Steve and I, have many times brought great wisdom into our lives. And we've benefited from it. I remember my dad had a phrase which, was, which he got from his mum, which was all about, Martin, as long as you do your best. Now, I didn't do very well at school. I went to Mark Rutherford. It's not, it's not, it's not Mark, Mark Rutherford's fault. It's obviously mine. But I struggled at school. I used to come home. I failed most of my exams. I know that doesn't surprise you. But I, and I used to say to mum, I talked to mum and dad, and they used to say, yeah, but Martin, have you done your best? And sometimes I was able to say yes. <laughs> Other times I needed to work a bit harder. But do you know, that really helped me. It wasn't, it wasn't getting this mark or this exam. It was about doing all that I could do. They said that. Dad used to coin the phrase, loved the phrase, before it was a song in, for Billy Ocean and another group as well, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah, that instilled something else. That's wisdom. You know, life is tough. Did you hear? When, when we were worshipping, we talked about feeling weak. And then, do you remember what, um, what was brought um, by Susie about going the extra mile? I thought that was part of the picture that God was trying to bring to us. Sometimes things are tough, but he's encouraged to go the extra mile because God is faithful. You know, we find God in that. It's not like we've suddenly got to be the whole answer. No, no, no. God partners with us. I really felt that was a really helpful message coming through. I remember also when I wasn't a Christian, I was in my late teens, my brother had become a Christian, uh, Steve, and a number of people in our youth work had all got saved. It was a wonderful time. We were All Nations Church, Brickell as it was called then. Uh, but I was one of the, the late developers. I didn't make a decision for Christ as early as others did. And I was feeling the pressure feeling the pressure. I didn't want to say yes just because everyone else was saying yes, but it felt like I was becoming the odd one out almost, it felt like. And I remember mum and, I don't know if you remember this mum, but I remember mum and dad sit me down and say, Martin, it doesn't matter to us whether you say yes. Of course it matters to them, but it didn't matter in terms of their love for me. And they made a point in saying, Martin, you make the decision you want to make. We will love you the same whatever decision you make. Suddenly the pressure was off. It's wonderful. Real wisdom. Real wisdom. Some mums and dads, mothers and fathers, they just know when to bring encouragement. They know when to bring strength. They know when to bring correction. It's wisdom, isn't it? I remember other times when I got involved 
in leadership. Dad used to say to me, these are my younger days as a leader, he used to, he used to keep telling me that it's not about me. It's about him. I found myself in a prayer meeting on, on Wednesday night. We, a number of us gathered to pray for New Day. And we, at the end, we all prayed for Ollie. Ollie Hearn, who's our youth pastor here. He's a wonderful young man, doing a brilliant job. And he's going up to New Day. Is it this afternoon? I think they're on their way, aren't they? And we're all praying for Ollie. And I just felt my prayer should be, the Lord is your shepherd. Because it's not about Ollie. You know, sometimes we, we, our, our compassion for a leader or our, our encouragement to a leader, we, we make it all about the leader, but actually the leader is to say, it's all about him. And so my prayer to Ollie was, was, the Lord is your shepherd and point everyone else to the shepherd. Don't make it about you. Do you know? And, and, and mum and dad brought that sort of wisdom to me when I was a young leader, being invaluable. Other times I remember dad saying to me, at the height of the success of Liverpool Football Club in the 70s, uh, uh, which this may surprise you now because Liverpool aren't the team they were in the 70s tabs. Uh, but he used to say, being a Christian is like turning up for Liverpool because they used to win everything. It's just maybe that worked in my family. But they helped. They say, yeah, we're turning up for Liverpool. When you support Crystal Palace, that meant something, you see. It's not just parental wisdom, though. We get wisdom in all sorts of places. What about the workplace? Have you found wisdom in your job through a wise boss? Or a wise colleague. Do you know anyone who works wisely? Proverbs 22, 29 says this. If you see a person skilled in their work, they will stand before kings. They will not stand before obscure men. What this proverb is saying is that generally people who work wisely and skillfully over a long period of time will be esteemed highly by their peers and superiors. And they'll be rewarded richly. It's the way life works. If they've handled themselves, if they've learned from someone alongside them, they've applied themselves, Proverbs says they will be rewarded. You see, Proverbs is saying that wisdom affects all areas of life. Whether it's parenting, whether it's growing up as a, as a kid, whether it's about our marriages, if you're married, whether it's about how you are being single, if it's the workplace, whether it's about how you treat your finances, your body, your spiritual life. Proverbs is saying that wisdom pays off. Wisdom pays off. Attain it. Set your heart on it. Go after it. Become wise and it's better than gold. But the Bible talks about the opposite to wisdom as well. It talks about foolishness or folly. And so there's this, this uh, tension, I guess, and this encouragement not to be foolish, but to be wise. But it's helpful just to look at what being foolish looks like and to understand the consequences that that will outwork. Some examples of foolishness in the Bible are these. Proverbs 18. Six says this, a fool's lips walk into a fight and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are a snare to his soul. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> Proverbs 12, the vexation, that's, I had to look that up, that's the annoyance. The vexation, the annoyance of a fool is known at once, but the prudent ignores an insult. And the next two I want to read are similar and really helpful. Proverbs 18, verse 2 says this. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. <laughs> There's a lot of that goes around, isn't it? Proverbs 28, verse 26. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. The thing is this. We are not born wise. In fact, we are born with a leaning towards foolishness. It's part of being a, a, fallen, a fallen humanity, actually. We have a leaning towards foolishness. And it starts at a very young age. Proverbs 22 says this foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. Now, some of you would have noticed where I have my grandson with us today, Ethan. Now, he is. 
Clearly, he's a genius. Let's start there, OK? Uh, but occasionally, he has foolish tendencies. Like, he's on the floor. He will eat everything he can get his hands to, yeah? There's no, you know, you know. Uh, we, had to, we even cleaned the floor a third time this week because he's just, he's throwing everything and anyway, everywhere. So there's a foolishness. Even when he, he's on a chair or on a, on, on a couch, he will walk and he won't think, how's he going to get off? He will just keep walking and then just experience the consequences of walking off a couch without thinking about it. He hasn't learned how to get off a couch yet. I mean, he's wonderful, obviously. He's perfect. And he's a genius, OK? However, he has foolish tendencies. But do you know, that's in all of us. And the whole point of life is growing from immaturity to maturity to moving away from those impulses that have no wisdom in them to actually walk in a life of wisdom. Whether we're a child or whether we're growing up as a teenager or whether we've come into adulthood, we are to be those that mature with wisdom. Let me ask you this question. Where are you folly prone these days where are you a bit foolish do you lose your temper easily do you bend the rules a little bit maybe it work do you spend more money than you can afford do you have relational difficulties I was talking to someone the other day and they were explaining about in their culture explained that that the concept of agreeing to disagree is, is completely foreign. There isn't this, this cultural understanding that it's okay to agree to disagree. Now, if I'm honest, that's coming into our, the British culture as well. It's becoming less okay to agree to disagree. If you don't agree with me, then I cancel you or, or I whatever you. <laughs> Do you have relational differences? Where are you folly prone? We are a work in progress, aren't we? And we have God's plan for us. And we have this remarkable book designed for people like you and I who can bring wisdom into our lives that the Bible says is better than gold. Let me give us three easy landing points of how we can grow in wisdom and ensure that wisdom wins over folly. The first would be this. If you want to become a wise person, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what it says in Proverbs 1, 7. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, let me be clear. When it says fear, it's not talking about being afraid. It's using fear in a particular way in that sense of awe. So it would be better to say the awe of the Lord. It's a a different way of using the word fear. So so sometimes our vocabulary doesn't help us. But actually it's that sense of when you come to God, you're thinking, actually you're God, I'm not. God knows best of my my life. And that sense of awe, that sense of reverence towards him. See, when we come to our Father, we can address him as Abba, can't we? It's like Papa. It's like, Father, there's that sense of intimacy, but there's also that sense of awe. Both of those things are true when we come to God and say, Abba, Father. And so, so, so uh, Proverbs helps us. It says yeah, at the beginning, the, the step number one is recognizing that he is almighty God. We still draw close to him intimately, but he's, he's a God we all. It's the beginning of wisdom. Because when we come to that place to God, we're actually saying also that we're saying we want God to be a father who trains us, who trains us in wisdom. It's like a a heart, it's a posture, if you like, of how we address God. The first is if you want to become a wise person, the fear of the Lord, the sense of awe of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Secondly, oh, by the way, that section at the beginning of of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 1, is the prologue to the whole book. 
And so what we're supposed to do is read the prologue. It sets us up. It puts the whole of the rest of Proverbs in context. So please, when you get a chance to read Proverbs, which I hope you will, read the prologue first. And that, that, the, the heart of the prologue is that verse in verse 7. But it's really important that we understand what literature we're reading and how it's written and how it's provided for us. So the first is the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Second, very complicated, this one, read the book of Proverbs. Taking God's wisdom and applying it to our lives. Get into this book. It's this book of dummies, book for dummies. I'm not trying to be derogatory. I'm just trying to be normal. You know, life is complex. Life has challenges, and God has provided this book rich in wisdom for us. Get into it. Learn it. Know it. Understand it's the way that life works most of the time. They're not commandments. They're not eternal truths. But it's wisdom that God has provided for us. Do you understand? We should get into this book. I really hope you do. And the third one. You've got to hang out with wise people. So much of the, of the Proverbs talk about wisdom that comes from others. I illustrated a few. We've got to invest time in wise people. Sometimes we, we get caught up in this individualistic me and Jesus journey. That's not God's plan. That's, that's folly. That's folly. We're supposed to be community. We're supposed to be with one another, helping one another. Let me make this very practical. We have um, what we call community groups, small groups that meet during the week, sometimes every week, sometimes every other week, sometimes less frequent. But they're seeking to become real communities together. And we have a cycle in this church, annual cycle, where when it comes to August, effectively, most, if not all of the groups, close. They have an, a 12-month cycle. And then we relaunch a whole load of new groups in September, October. Now, many of the groups that were the previous year choose to open up again and start again. But actually, we have a number of more groups uh, that we're looking to launch uh, in September, October. So we have this normal cycle. Let me urge you, if you're not in a community group, when I say if you're not, I mean, I'm not talking about a name on a list. I'm actually being part of the community. Then please consider when we relaunch groups in September, October, becoming part of a community. And I'm not really saying it just because you will receive wisdom from others. There's people in those groups that need the wisdom that you have to impart to them. Proverbs 12, 20 says this, He who walks with wise people will become wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Let's be a church that really surrounds ourselves, surrounds one another with wise people. And let me just throw in there, if you are thinking or wondering about leading your own community group, we'd love to talk to you about that as well, because we need many more groups as we look towards the next series. Church family. Let's be a people that get into this, this book of Proverbs. Amen? Amen? Let's enjoy it. Let's learn from it. Let's help one another as we explore this journey of wisdom. And we'll be looking at different subjects over the next few weeks, which I think we're going to have some fun with. It's a great, great series, and uh, I think we're going to enjoy it. Let's stand together as we finish for a moment. Let's come to God in prayer. I just want to give opportunity, I want to pray for all of us, but also I want to give opportunity for people that maybe they're thinking that it's about the beginning bit. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. And maybe there's something in your heart that you realise that you've, you've got to, you want to get back in line, back on track with saying, actually, God, I want to follow your ways. Now, for some of you, that may be the first time you've ever said that. But others of you, it may be that you just know you've drifted from ensuring that God is in the number one spot because that's the beginning place the rest of it is just just a good advice on top it starts with knowing who God is and being secure in that relationship let's come to God in prayer Lord first I want to pray for anyone who is clear that they need to and want to get back in line with you 
Lord, I pray for those that may know you, but they've drifted from you. That may be the challenges of the world, of what we were uh, discussing and, and talking about and sharing in our worship time as we sung songs together. The pressures of life, the struggles, is actually uh, uh, pushing us away from you rather than pushing us towards you. Lord, I pray that this would be a moment. Lord, I pray you'd help each and every one to, to, to come to you once again and say, God, I want to follow you. I want to recognize that you're my Lord. I want to recognize that your son Jesus is my saviour. Lord, I pray that people would know that now. Lord, I pray also maybe for those that have never considered that. I pray that this would be a decision moment. This would be the catalyst moment. This would be the start moment for them. Lord, I pray for them that they would know your son Jesus. They would know uh, of his life, but also of his death and his resurrection that brings new life. Lord, that's the entry point. That's the true beginning point in following God and knowing your wisdom in our lives. I pray for anyone who may find themselves in that situation today. And Lord, I pray for all of us. Lord, I pray that we would really get into Proverbs, that we would be changed, that we would make life changes as a result of learning more about your wisdom in Proverbs that we would understand how to navigate life in a better way, that we would understand where we're folly prone, where we're vulnerable to being more foolish than wise. Lord, help us in that. Lord, we know that you will be gentle with us. We know that you have the best for us. But Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, speak to us. Speak to us all and make us aware of areas that you want to change and, and form and make more like your son. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So that is it. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I hope you've been blessed by what you've heard here today. If you're new to Woodside and you want to find out more about who we are, what we do, what we believe, then please feel free to check out the link that is on the screen now. And if you would like to get in contact with us, then please also feel free to email the address that's on screen and one of our team will get back to you. We'd love to have you join us in person one week. We meet at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning and you can join us either over in Great Denham or at our building on Dover Crescent in Putnam. So that is it. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Thanks for joining us. For more information, visit woodsidechurch.com or follow us on social media.